Today we gather together to be reminded of God's great love for us. Let us absorb that love that we may share it with others in this coming week. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Lead the humble and teach them your way. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Let us pray. Have mercy upon us and hear our prayer, O God. We have failed it to live in the light of your covenant. You set your rainbow above us, that clouds of unbelief darken our way. Distrust wells within us. Fear, not hope, is our watchword. Your beloved bids us follow, but we are slow to obey. Without your grace, we are fruitless and inert. In mercy, renew us and bring us to life through Jesus Christ. Remember that Christ died for sins once and for all that he might bring us to God cleansed of unrighteousness. Baptism now saves you, not as removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Remember your baptism and live in new life assured of forgiveness through Christ who intercedes on our behalf. Amen.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God stretches out the heavens, who sends light to the nations, who gives breath to us all. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Young people may come forward at this time. Next Sunday, we'll have about three times this many, right? <laughs> Children and Youth Sunday. Sure, we always, we always come out for that one. Uh, let me ask you this. Anybody here ever get an A on the report card? You can hold your hand up if you got an A on your report card. Okay. What do your parents say to you when you get an A on your report card? Oh, here's one. I forgot my mic. Good job, how about that? Good job, yeah, if I ever got an A on my report card, I probably might have heard the same words, okay? But I didn't do that very often. Any rate, good job. Now in this morning's lesson, Jesus gets an A on his report card, and what does God say to him? Well, actually he doesn't say it to Jesus. But Jesus heard him. God looked out at the congregation standing around and he said, Hey, this is my beloved son. And what did he say next? Listen to him. Listen to him. Pay attention. When Jesus speaks, we should listen. Now, if you get an A on your report card, I think it would be a good idea to pay attention to you. And I'm glad so many of you got it. He's on your report card. So I'll pay more attention when I'm listening to you from now on. Is that okay? <laughs> Jesus got an A on his report card. And his father said, You're my beloved son. Of course, in your case, you would be a beloved child. Daughter. Okay. Anyway, please remember something good on your report cards all the time and ask these people back here to remind you that you did a really good job. Whether they say good job or whatever, you deserve to be congratulated. Thank you for being here and we'll see you next week after you get another A. <laughs>
and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho, and the company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. And then Elisha said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. And then Elisha took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. And the water was parted to one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. And when they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what may I do for you? before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please, let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them and Elisha ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them into pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read responsively Psalm 50. The Mighty One, God the Lord has spoken, calling the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Of Zion, perfect is his beauty. God shines forth in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence with a consuming flame before and round about a raging storm. God calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of the people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. The heavens declare the righteousness of God's cause, for it is God who is judged. The second reading is from the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians. Even if our gospel was veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers, to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of the darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days later. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. 
He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. And as they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When I saw Jack Hauser walk in this morning, uh, I realized he probably would be thinking that I wrote this sermon knowing that he would be back today. Jack is chairman of our call committee, which has been in business for so long. <laughs> any rate, uh, we're, we're hoping for better success to go ahead. But actually, I wrote this sermon without knowing you were coming back, <laughs> although I probably would have mailed it to you <laughs> afterwards. any rate, uh, uh, Kay told me when she saw me first this morning that the weather was a heck of a lot better in Florida. Is that what you said to me? Well, would you believe we had somebody come from Alaska down here <laughs> to see the weather because she wanted to get colder? <laughs> I think it's been, <laughs> Karen, I think it's colder here than it was in Alaska. <laughs> Maybe not when you left, anyway. Thank you for visiting with your mother for a while and us as well. Appreciate it. Well, Jack, since you're here, <laughs> let me tell you the process of calling a pastor has changed a lot in my lifetime. Sixty years ago, call committees were free, free to roam the countryside as packs of wolves looking for pastors. As a matter of fact, that's how I wound up at Duncansville in 1958. There was a knock on my door one Saturday morning, and I was busy running the sweeper, and it had all the living room furniture out in the middle of the floor, and uh, uh, these two guys introduced themselves. Of course, when I looked out and saw two guys standing out there, I assumed they were Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons or something. But anyway, but they said they were from Duncansville Lutheran Church and they were looking for a pastor. Now, the only reason they didn't show up on Sunday morning was because I was director of education at St. John's in Lewistown and therefore didn't preach on Sunday morning. So at uh, any rate, but otherwise, congregations would often wake up on Sunday morning and look around and see sitting in a congregation four or five men. And ladies, I'm sorry, but you weren't on the call committee in that day, okay? Four or five men. Now, those men would usually separate themselves, one here, one there, and so forth. But look, when five men show up on a Sunday morning that nobody recognizes, you can be pretty sure they're there to steal your pastor, which is exactly what they did. And I'll say this, that uh, the pastors who were had a really good reputation, often went to the highest bidder in those days. And that was before Carl and I got in the market, I guess, because we didn't get those high bids. Uh, but but at any rate, uh, that's the way it was in that day. No pastor was safe, or no congregation was safe, I should say. Anybody could show up at any time and hike them away from you. Actually, I got my next job the same way, Advent Lutheran in York had advertised for a director of education and music, which is what I really wanted to be. And uh, I called them on the phone, made an appointment, and that's how I wound up down there. So it was kind of freewheeling uh, at that time. Uh, I wouldn't suggest you try this today uh, uh, for the call committee. You could get in trouble with the bishop. The Central Pennsylvania Synod in 1983, was posting all vacant positions in congregations and inviting any pastor in the Senate or anywhere else to apply for the job. I was one of 24 pastors who sent in our resumes to St. John's in Columbia, Pennsylvania. 
I didn't get the job because I was the best of the lot, because after the interviews were all done, I was the only one nutty enough to take the job. It was one of those kinds of jobs. Carl, perhaps you have one of those too, somewhere along the line. But at any rate, the Synod Bishop today gets from the ELCA, and Jack knows this full well, the whole call committee, the bishop of our synod will get a couple names from the ELCA, and he prays and he prays and he prays to try to decide which congregation to send the candidate to. So far, actually, we've done pretty well. We've had a number of candidates, but none of them have quite worked out. Uh, this pastor is praying that the next one will. Okay. The call process at the time of Elijah was totally different. Elijah did not have to write a letter of resignation or apply for a new job. God took care of it all. Elijah's call was not up until, according to today's first lesson, the call was not up until that God sent that chariot down to pick him up and take him off to heaven. Elijah even knew what his reply who or who his replacement was going to be. As a matter of fact, he had worked with his replacement, Elisha, for a number of years before this. So God was grooming the new pastor while the old pastor was still on the site. Maybe that's happening now, but God hasn't informed me of that. It was certainly a smooth transition, the likes of which our bishop would enjoy having today. But now let us look at the situation that occurred between Jesus and three of his candidates for the priesthood, as we say. He was grooming these three men, Peter, James, and John, to follow him after he left this earth. At the time we meet Jesus, he and his three recruits are going up the mountain. There were two people they intended to meet up there that Jesus wanted to introduce the disciples to. And Jesus also wanted to let his disciples know exactly what their job was and where they were to do it. As soon as Peter saw Jesus there with Elijah and with Moses, he decided it's a good idea to build three bungalows here so that they have some place to stay. Now, I always get a kick out of this story because he's talking to three people that have been to heaven, Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, and he's saying, let me build you a place down here on this mountain. It'll be a lot better for you. I'm sure they laughed at him too. But at any rate, Peter, Jesus shot Peter down and said, maybe it's time to get off the mountain. Maybe it's time to remember that Pastors don't look for retirement plans when they take their first call, like a lot of young people that apply for jobs everywhere else. As a matter of fact, Jesus said that the call to you will end the same way it did for Elijah when he sends the chariot to take you home. I think the wealth of the past, the work of pastors. It's not up on some mountain where they can get a great view of the scenery, but the work of the pastor is down in the trenches. And any pastor who reads the gospel stories of Jesus with any sense of sincerity clearly understands that the mission of Jesus was not on the mountain, but down in the trenches. That's where he spent all of his ministry. An outdoor bulletin board recently at the Church of God next door had these words, living for Jesus is not a part-time job. The message at the top of the tombstone that at the head of my daughter's grave reads, on call for life, which happens to be the motto of the uh, EMT organizations. Pastors would do well to make that their motto as well. We will be reminded in six weeks that the chariot also came down and took Jesus away. On further reading, we may lead to the understanding that neither death nor the ascension of Jesus could separate him from his disciples. 
But now let's really get personal. Paul addresses this point, and Luther expounds on it greatly. God has called all of us under this roof today. He has called all of us to be members of the priesthood of all believers. Now, whether you feel Jesus in your heart and your life because you have accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior, or whether you're just kind of confirmed like the rest of us Lutherans. The ministry of Jesus Christ is something to which each of us has been called, even those of us who have taken, especially those of us who have taken the vows of ordination. So call committees should be very careful, along with congregations, what kind of expectations they have from their pastors, because those are the same expectations that Jesus will lay on each of us. When God has your chariot ready, he will come and get you, just as he did for Elijah, and then you'll know that your job is over. But until that time comes, we need to understand that God expects all of us, like the EMT organization, to be on call for life. The calling press process by which a congregation selects a new pastor is changing with each new revolution or whatever we're going to call it in the church. But we all need to understand that if we are a believer, we are called by God to the ministry, the priesthood of all believers. And let me tell you, if you're ever tempted to take off your clerics and hang it all up, as I'm sure Carl and I must have been at one time or another in our ministry, take a moment and pray to God and see if maybe he won't be able to send in some reinforcements. Hey, that's worked for me for 62 years. I think it'll work for you as well. Amen. our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son.
Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God, our light, and our salvation hears us when we pray, let us offer prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the ministry of the gospel proclaimed in word and deed, for congregations near and far, and for all who show the face of Christ throughout the world, let us pray. And have mercy, O God. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, seas and skies, and creatures seen and unseen, that all may be guided by your Holy Spirit to be stewards of our earth. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For firefighters and police officers, attorneys and advocates, civil servants and corporate executives, and leaders of governments, that through their insight and patience, peace and justice prevail throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all the rulers of the earth in local, regional, national, and international offices, and those without the power of official office, that they will be given the courage to work for the protection of all people and act as servants of all, let us pray. And have mercy, O God. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially for those who we now name in our hearts or aloud. Jane Henry. That as Christ was transfigured on the mountaintop, sickness will be turned into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consolation, and suffering into assurance. Let us pray. For companions who accompany us on our journeys through life, for this community of faith that supports us, and for guidance during difficult times, that we see the glory of God revealed around us, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all the churches of the Allegheny Synod, we particularly pray today for the assembly of St. John Lutheran and Church in Sinking Valley. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their earthly pilgrimage, that their lives of service and prayer inspire us, inspire us in our days. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Lord God, we do hold up before you today that committee has worked so diligently and so hard to find us a permanent pastor. We ask that you continue to guide the bishop and the committee, that working together they may be successful in bringing us a leader. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, you hear our prayers even before we speak them. Receive them for the sake of the one through whom you have revealed your goodness, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You bring me things up.
hide back your radiance, neither hold back your word. You come to us in love, fresh as the morning. We are sustained by your mercy and renewed through your grace. You have sent us your spirit to freshen the day. All that we are, we owe to, to you. Accept our gifts and bless our endeavors so that all we do may accord with your will. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up our hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty, merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who sharing our life lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to your own brilliant light. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. St. Paul said, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord, Lord Jesus on the night when he betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, This is my body, this is for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup also, after supper saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We who are, who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Come, be filled with light and life. Amen. Amen.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. morning star, fair and bright, you have refreshed us again with heavenly food. You are our dearest treasure. Go with us now, today, tomorrow, every day, that we tell the story of your never-ending love and sing your praise both now and forever. Amen. Amen. The God of glory dwell in you richly. Name you beloved and shine brightly on your path. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Today we have learned from God's word what is expected from us this coming week. Go in peace, be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.